from our panelists. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Uh, let me welcome Dr. Robert Harbaugh. He is the neurosurgeon at Penn State University in Hershey, Pennsylvania. He serves as the director of the Penn State Institute of Neurosciences. Dr. Harbaugh is testifying on behalf of the American Association of Neurological Surgeons, Congress of Neuro Neurological Surgeons. The association is dedicated to advancing the specialty of neurological surgery. Welcome, sir. You have five minutes uh, to make your presentation. Good morning, Chairwoman Velasquez, uh, Ranking Member Graves, uh, members of the committee. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me to appear today to discuss the, the current workforce shortage that is uh, facing surgical specialty medicine and specifically uh, neurosurgical care. Um, recently and understandably, a great deal of attention has been paid to the shortage of primary care physicians, but little attention has been paid to the shortage of surgeons. Um, the Association of American Medical Colleges estimates a shortage of 46,000 primary care physicians and 41,000 surgical specialists by 2025. And while plans are being considered to address the primary care uh, deficit, uh, little is being done to address the shortage of surgical specialists. Uh, the Bureau of Health Professions uh, projects a 19% increase in primary care physicians by 2020 based on some of the actions that are planned, but continued and significant decreases in the number of surgical specialists over the same time. Uh, at present, uh, there are fewer than 3,500 uh, practicing board-certified neurosurgeons in the United States uh, serving a population of more than 300 million people. And as the population ages, uh, more of our citizens face the devastating problems such as stroke, uh, degenerative spine disease, uh, Parkinson's disease, and brain tumors that neurosurgeons treat. Uh, this uh, supply-demand mismatch uh, will become ever more acute. In addition, the effectiveness of things like deep brain stimulation for treating movement disorders and obsessive-compulsive disorders makes it very likely that we're on the verge of a minimally invasive and effective neurosurgical treatment for things like obesity and addiction. And because of the prevalence of these disorders, many more neurosurgeons will be needed to meet the demand for their uh, neurosurgical treatment. We already have an acute neurosurgical workforce problem in the subspecialty areas of pediatric neurosurgery and trauma and emergency neurosurgery. Um, there are less than 200 surgeons certified by the American Board of Pediatric Neurological Surgery. And within the next 10 years, more than 40 percent of the current pediatric neurosurgical workforce is likely to retire. On the supply side, there are less than 10 trainees who enter pediatric neurosurgery fellowship training each year. There is also a shortage of neurosurgeons to provide neurosurgical emergency and trauma care. Uh, closure of trauma centers in Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Texas, and Florida were due in part to shortages of neurosurgeons. And the National Foundation for Trauma Care reports that after trauma surgeons, neurosurgeons are the specialists with the highest percentage of trauma care. According to this same report, physician shortages uh, caused by a variety of factors, including medical liability expense, decreasing reimbursement, uh, represent one of the major reasons for the closure of trauma centers. And with estimates that 10 to 20 percent of the nation's 600 regional trauma centers may be forced to close within three years, it appears that neurosurgeon shortages are affecting the availability of trauma care in the United States despite the fact that more than 90 percent of practicing neurosurgeons participate in emergency call coverage. Many neurosurgeons must provide emergency care at more than one hospital at a time, and that places our citizens at risk of delayed care for neurological emergencies such as head, spine, and nerve trauma, and cerebral hemorrhage from ruptured intracranial aneurysms and other causes. While there are many complex factors that lead medical students to select one specialty over another, there are several reasons for the present and impending shortages in the neurosurgical workforce. One of these is medical liability. Neurosurgeons continue to face increased professional liability insurance costs, which in some areas of the country now approach $300,000 per year. 
According to a survey we conducted a few years ago, medical liability issues contributed substantially to neurosurgeons limiting their availability for emergency and trauma care and eliminating treatment of high-risk patients. And medical liability reform would clearly help address this part of the physician workforce shortage. Lifestyle issues must also be considered as a contributing factor in the shortage of surgical specialists. The AMC projects that physician practice um, patterns are likely to be different in the future because of a greater concern for lifestyle issues among young physicians and because of the intensity of a neurosurgical practice with frequent emergencies requiring long hours of neurosurgical care, lifestyle issues will contribute to a shortage of available neurosurgeons. In some areas of medicine, physicians' assistants and advanced practice nurses may be able to address a shortage of physicians, but there is no good substitute for well-trained neurosurgeons for patients with head, spine, and nerve injuries, brain tumors, stroke, hydrocephalus, and other neurosurgical emergencies. After graduating from medical school, most neurosurgeons train for seven years or more before entering practice, and there are less than 100 neurosurgical training programs in the United States, with many programs training only one resident per year. Compounding this problem, the uh, Accreditation Council for Graduate Medical Education established work hour restrictions for residents, and due to the time and intensity required to adequately train a neurosurgeon, restricting weekly work hours will require lengthening the period of training if we want to continue to have well-trained neurosurgeons. Over the past several years, we have heard repeatedly that reimbursement is contributing to the shortage of primary care physicians because more medical students choose higher paid specialties rather than primary care. However, there is also a risk that reducing surgical specialty reimbursement in the face of the medical liability and lifestyle issues that inhibit students from entering a surgical specialty will exacerbate the current shortage of surgical uh, specialists. Um, in conclusion, the convergence of declining reimbursement, rising practice expense, less time for non-work-related activities may deter young physicians from becoming neurosurgeons. This will exacerbate already acute problems with access to neurosurgical care, and I think these problems will be compounded by effective neurosurgical treatments for common disorders and an aging population that requires more neurosurgical services. Thank you for this opportunity.